Psalm 19. Let's read this together. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork. Day unto day utter speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath He set a tabernacle for the sun, which has a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoices on the strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The man of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Give back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my healing. I'll sing that last verse, all right? Verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Something like that. That's probably not the way David sang it. <laughs> He'll correct this one. Day. Psalm 19. May the Lord add His blessings to read in His Word this morning. Um, what a blessing to, uh, to be with you today and look into the Word of God together again. Mm -hmm. Never take this for granted. Right. Yeah. It's a privilege to have the very words of God before us today. Amen. I'm assured of that in my heart. Yeah, yeah, me Absolutely. Too. Yeah. No doubt. In verse number one, it talks about the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. The first part of uh, Psalm 19, verses 1 through 6, talks about God's creation. That's one of God's great witnesses. I preached a message uh, a few months back on God's three witnesses. We have God's creation, right? Then we have God's canon, or God's word, verses 7 to 11. And then verses 12 through 14, we have the converted. We have the servant of God that's saved and they are certainly a witness as well. All three of these are tangible. Mm -hmm. Right? God's creation is all around us, right? We can touch it, right? The Word of God. Tangible thing God left for us. His Word, right? Given by holy men of God who spake as the Holy Ghost moved them. And then, as God saves someone, they're also tangible, right? Proof right in front of you. A child of God that's been changed. Your life. Mm -hmm. Three yeah. things. Three proofs. Proof, great proofs of God. His existence. His love. But in particular, I'd like to look this morning at that first part where it talks about God's creation. That's why I brought my globe with me. <laughs> Amazing, eh? We take a lot of these things for granted. We learn in school, oh yeah, that's the earth, and that's the sun, and this is that, and that's the stars. Do you realize all the forces at work yeah. to keep yeah. all this in sync? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, our solar system is like a Swiss watch, folks. I mean, it's so... Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Everything has to be just right or... I mean, so finely tuned or we could not exist. Yeah. That's right. If the gravitational forces and nuclear forces or whatever go a little too far, more than they are right now, mm -hmm. we'd all be squashed. We just, you know, you know what I mean? Or, uh, a little further away from the sun than we are, we freeze. A little too mm -hmm. close to the sun, we yeah. fry. I mean, just, you think yeah. of all the different things, right? All pointing to God. Amen. Amen. All pointing to an intelligent being yes, that put this all in work right. and, and keeps it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Somebody has yeah. to manage this thing. I mean, how does the sun just keep burning? Yeah. You know? <laughs> It's a thermonuclear bomb with a thermostat. Think about that, folks. I mean, that's just crazy, right? Brother Joe dealt with a lot of stuff that blows up. He knows a lot about explosives. He's an explosive expert, okay? To control that, that stuff, I mean, that's, wow. 
That takes a lot of intelligence, mm -hmm. a lot of yeah. skill, right? Mm -hmm. We serve a great God. Amen. Amen. He's an amazing God. Yes, sir. Yeah. Amen. Sorry. I'm so glad I know him. Me too. Amen. Not just know about him. Right. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yeah. When you give your heart to Christ, I was thinking of this as Miss Eva was singing her song about being a prisoner of hope. When you give your heart to the Lord, He changes your wanter. Right. You know? Yeah. We don't come to church today because we feel like we have to. Yeah. We don't right. read our Bibles because we feel like we have to. Yeah. We don't pray. We don't witness. Live for God because we feel like we have to. We do it because we want to. Amen. Yeah. Because we've had Amen. our wanter changed. That's right. <laughs> That's what the Lord will do. God's creation points to God. and I was just looking up some of the famous scientists of old, and I'd just like to read some of their quotes to you this morning, just to start things off. Nicholas Copernicus, maybe you've heard of him? Lived from 1473 to 1543. He was the founder of helocentric cosmology. He said this, these guys, they were brilliant. Okay, for their time, with no more technology and stuff that they had, and the stuff they came up with. Me and Adrian were just talking about this, how they measured the distance from the earth to the sun and said, well, no, you know, help and just I mean it's just they were unbelievable. For their time. You know, just incredible. He said, Copernicus, to know the mighty works of God, to comprehend his wisdom and majesty and power, to appreciate in degree the wonderful working of his laws. Really, all this must be a pleasing and acceptable mode of worship to the Most High. <laughs> all these guys are going to mention guys like Einstein, they looked up to them. They discovered what they discovered and came up with the theories they came up with and so forth and the equations based on these guys. They did a lot of the groundwork, they paved the road. Galileo, maybe you've heard of him? 1564 to 1642, father of observational astronomy and modern physics. He said, the laws of nature are written by the hand of God in the language of mathematics. Johannes Kepler lived from 1571 to 1630. He was a founder of physical astronomy and modern optics. I love this. He says, since we astronomers are priests of the highest God in regard to the book of nature, it befits us to be thoughtful, not of the glory of our minds, but rather, above all else, of the glory of God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome stuff. Yeah. Sir Isaac Newton. Lived from 1643 to 1727. Really a genius. Mathematician, physicist, astronomer, theologian, author widely recognized as one of the most influential scientists of all time. I've got a few of his quotes. The most beautiful system of the sun, he said, the planets and the comets, could only proceed from the counsel and dominion of an intelligent and powerful being. This being governs all things, not as the soul of the world, but as Lord over all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Another quote by Isaac Newton. Don't doubt the Creator, because it is inconceivable that accidents alone could be the controller mm. of this universe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well said. Mm -hmm. yeah. He also said, It is the perfection of God's works that they were all done with the greatest simplicity. He is the God of order and not of confusion. It's amazing how God has made things so that we can understand them. Yeah. Even way, where the earth is placed within our galaxy. You know? Mm -hmm. Outside of the spiral arms of our galaxy. It's got, if you've ever seen a picture of a galaxy, it has spiral arms. Kind of cloudy, right? Areas. Mm -hmm. But we're right in the middle in between these spiral arms. On the outer edge of our galaxy. So we can observe the universe. Right? Mm -hmm. Beautiful platform where he placed us, yeah. you know? Yeah. At the same time, a place of protection as well. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Isaac Newton also said, What we know is a drop. What we don't know is an ocean. 
Yeah. 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 And this is probably my, my favorite. He said, in the absence of any other proof, the thumb alone would convince me of God's existence. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. And I just happened to come across something that Albert Einstein said. Uh, of course, we've all heard about Albert Einstein. He's more close to our time. Great the theoretical physicist. I don't know if he was ever saved, but lived from 1879 to 1955. But he did say this. The more I study science, the more I believe in God. Mm -hmm. Interesting, eh? Yeah. Some of the greatest minds, brainiest people, geeky people. You know, those people that are really good at math. Oh. Those people that get on my nerves. <laughs> they believed in God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As our creator. Even more importantly, as our Savior. Amen. In Genesis 1, the very beginning of the Bible, we understand the beginning of creation. Not the beginning of God. God's always been. God always will be. Amen. But the beginning of creation here, as we know, in this life. In the beginning, God. One time, me and Eva, I believe Matthew was there, but we're in the Denali State Park in Alaska. This is the biggest park, I think, in Alaska. And it's where it has the highest peak, not the Kenley, maybe you've heard of it. I think it's like 20,000 feet. Mm -hmm. um, most days you cannot see it. It's too cloudy. It's too high to peak. Mm -hmm. And we were there, and it was a cloudy day, wasn't it? Like most. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but there was this one ridge that I went up where they had a parking lot for all the buses and, and that. And this was right before you would go uh, down the, the park road uh, towards Mount McKinley. And we'd stop there. I think maybe the, the park road was closed that day. I can't remember. But anyway, you could look at the, a lot of the other mountain ranges and uh, other peaks around it. And uh, we're on the top of this uh, ridge, pretty tall, climbed up there. And all these people, I mean, very busy place, of course, you know, lots of tourists, right? And uh, like all the little cars and big buses, greyhounds, they look like little matchbox cars, you know, for, <laughs> to me, you know, looking down you know, from this ridge. And I shouted from the top of my lungs. I put my hands up to my mouth. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And I didn't know for sure if they could even hear me, you know, because I was so so high, you know. But when I got back down, Eva said, "We could hear you clear as a bell." What it was, it just hit me when I was just up there because the view was just so beautiful. I mean, mountains as far as the eye could see in every direction. It was just uh, as breathtaking, you know, mm -hmm. snowy peaks, you know, and just, ah, uh, it was gorgeous. And I was just overcome. I just yeah. had to quote that verse. <laughs> but in Genesis, we see the beginning of the creation of God. In the Gospel of John, we see the beginning of the Gospel. God's plan to redeem mankind. Now, this actually began way back in creation. God had a plan in mind, in God's mind, mm -hmm of how he would redeem us back to him. In the beginning, John says, was the Word. In Genesis, we understand how the creature was made. God breathed into his nostrils a breath of life, and man became a living soul. That's the first birth. But in John, we understand how the children of God are made. To them gave he power to become the sons of God. This is the second birth. In Genesis, we understand the fall of mankind, the rejection of God, their Creator. Eve, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. But in, God, in John's Gospel, we understand the depravity of mankind and the rejection of God, their Savior. The Bible says, He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. In Genesis, we have the first Adam that brought death, messed everything up, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, death by sin, and so death passed upon all men. But in John's Gospel, we have the second Adam that brought life. Amen. Amen. He fixed everything. Amen. 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 That we've messed up. <laughs> Much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And that's you today, if you'll believe. If you'll come to Him, if you'll trust Him. Amen. 
Go to Romans chapter 5, if you would, before we, um, we'll go, end up over at Genesis in a little bit here, but just first, let's go to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 17. The Bible says, for if by one man's offense, death reigned by one. Of course, that's Adam. Much more, they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one. That's Jesus Christ. Verse 18, Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men under the justification of life. So we're seeing, continuing the comparison between Adam and Christ. Verse 19, For as by one man's disobedience, Adam, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one, Christ, shall many be made righteous. I love verse 20. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. And that's what the law does. It shows us how we're, we're lost. We're condemned before God. We can't keep the law. We can't meet God's standard. God's standard is perfection. We can't meet that. So the offense bound, abounds in that. But, the Bible says, where sin abounded, Grace did much more abound. Amen. Amen. God's grace is more powerful, amen, than amen. sin. God's grace is more powerful than the law. God's yes, love sir. reaches further and deeper. Amen. 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 And abounds more for our salvation. Verse 21, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes, sin hath reigned here, and it's caused a lot of havoc in this world. This beautiful world that God made at the very beginning. With no sin, everything was perfect. That's the way God designed it. That's the way God wanted it to stay. He gave mankind a very simple test mm -hmm. because He wanted them to follow Him with their free will. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful gift. It is. <laughs> if you were the Creator, would you have created yourself with a free will? He wants us to choose Him. Mm -hmm. But even though that we didn't choose him at the beginning, and we chose rather to follow Satan, God's enemy, right? One of the fallen angels. And that's why there's so much havoc in the world today because of sin and the devil and following him, and make, making him our God instead of the true God. Mm -hmm. He still loves us. Yeah. Yeah. And he made a plan way back then how to redeem us back to himself. It's a marvelous plan. Amen. What we believe today, what we hold to, these hymns we're singing about, these testimonies you're giving, this is nothing new. Yes. Right. That's right. People begin getting saved for a long time. They've been trusting in Lord Jesus Christ to be their Savior for a long time. Even before the cross, they were looking forward to the day that He would come. Amen. And they were saved by faith. They believed. Amen. The Bible says Abraham believed and was counted for righteousness, right? Because he believed in what would come. The Christ, the Messiah, the Lamb of God who would take away the sins of the world. Every time they sacrificed a lamb, it was a picture of Christ. Mm -hmm. The blood that was shed, the sinless blood, mm -hmm. right? It was shed for our redemption. Go now to John's Gospel, chapter 1. The Gospel of John, chapter 1. Verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So Pastor, now who is the Word? Well, look over verse number 14. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That can only be Christ. That's right. There's only one that fits that description. So, Christ was in the beginning with God. It says in verse number 2, The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Christ is the Creator. Jesus Christ. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. I was speaking to a very intelligent teenager this past week, and we were just discussing a few things. And she said, uh, she said Dad... Life can only come from life. <laughs> what a profound statement. Yeah. So true. Very true. Exactly. Life can only come from life. 
You know, it's it's just a lot of absurdity going on. Really. I mean, atheism and all this that's spreading, it seems, and the hardness of people's hearts against God. I mean, these quotes I read you this morning for these brilliant men, brilliant scientists, they... Um, I mean, they were smart people. A lot smarter than a lot of scientists today. Yeah. Okay. Today they use calculators, you know, and computers, and they yeah. think they're smart. We got this information that's so handy, right? Back in the day, they didn't have all that stuff. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant men, and yet they knew God. They knew the Lord, and they weren't ashamed of it. And all this is recorded. What are we to be ashamed of? Yeah. Don't let it bother you, okay? Right. Yeah. All this ignorance and yeah. willingly ignorance, as the Bible yeah. says, yeah. that's going on today. Yeah. Don't let it affect you, all right? Yeah. When you're with God, when you know God, you are a majority. Yeah. God's a majority. Yes, Amen. Amen. He fills all. Amen. He fills the whole universe. That's right. How big is the universe? We don't know. I guarantee you one thing. He's there. Amen. Wherever you point to, He's there. He's a trillion light years in that direction. He's a quadrillion light years in that direction. It doesn't matter. He's there. Amen. Keep that in mind. Amen. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Verse 6, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. We need some men sent from God. We need some men to stand up and give God's message to them. Amen. And boldly declare it. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. No matter what the world says or what they think. All that's old fashioned. Mm -hmm. That old Bible. Mm -hmm. No, it's actually very up to date. Sure is. In fact, it tells the future. And so far, until May the 19th, 2019, it's never been wrong on any of its predictions. That's a pretty good record. Yeah. yeah. Amen. If I came across a book like that, I'd be like, hey, I better uh, pay attention to what it's right. saying. Because so far, it's been right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, is there any re reason to doubt in the future that it'll be wrong? It's got a pretty good record. We need some men, amen? That'll be like John. John the Baptist. The same came for a witness. To bear witness of the light. That all men through him might believe. All men. Did you catch that? Right. All. There's hope for all. There's Amen. Amen. That's right. There's hope for all your family. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's hope for all your friends. Yep. Mm -hmm. Your neighbors. That's right. People you work with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're precious. Amen. And they can be saved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God can save others in false mm -hmm. religions. That's good. Mm -hmm. God can bring them out of that yeah. mess. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I can't stand religion. I know. It does so much damage. I'm talking about false religion. There's true religion in Christ, but I mean, you know what I'm saying. Most religion is just, oh, it's terrible. What it does to people. It gets them to trust in themselves. Well, if I just keep working at it, if I just keep trying to be better and gooder, and maybe I'll make it. It's always maybe, though. Right. There's no yeah, hope in it. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. right. But when you know Christ, Amen. there's hope. Yeah, right. He puts hope yeah. in your soul. Amen. That's right. Big difference. Yes, sir. Yeah. But there's hope for the Catholics. Yes. There's hope for them. They can come to Christ. They yes. can know God. They know about Him, but they don't know Him. Right. Yeah. They know Him in a twisted way. Yeah. They don't know Him as their personal Lord right. and Savior. Right. Yeah. Right. The Muslims, they can come to Christ. Yeah. Amen. We love them. Yes. So Amen. Yes. Okay. And even if they're nasty to us, we still love them. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Absolutely. Don't write them off. No. Don't write people off. Don't do that. Right. Okay. Right. If you do that, you're just getting in the flesh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know we're all tempted at times. Wow. They don't want to listen. You know. I'm just no, you keep praying for them, you keep going right. back. Exactly. As God leads you. Okay? I told you about the guy who led my dad to the Lord, give me credit. 
when he would come to my dad, many a time, my dad would cuss and swear him. You know, blankety blank, you know, Christian. You know, you know. If he had had that attitude, my dad wouldn't have got saved. Right. If he was fine, that you don't want to hear the gospel, then fine. Now that's a wrong kind of attitude. Yeah. Okay? That's not right. Right. No, you keep going back. You keep telling them. You keep Amen. loving them, okay? That's right. Amen. Loving them to Jesus. Amen. 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 Yeah. As God leads you. Definitely. You do that. And because Jimmy Craig did, my dad eventually got saved. Right. <laughs> I kept praying for my dad. I'm so glad I didn't write him off. Yeah. 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 Or, most likely, I wouldn't be saved today. Right. I wouldn't be saved before you. And tell me about my Jesus. Right. Amen. About my Christ. Yeah. Think about that. Brother Jimmy Craig had given up. Let's not give up on souls. Right. Amen. 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 That's good. Okay. The same came for witness to bear witness of the light that all oh, men. God's not a Calvinist. Amen, yes, sir. Amen, Brother Kyle. Amen. That all men through him might believe. Yes. God wants everybody in Yes, him. he does. Everybody. Yes. That's Nobody right. Nobody excluded. Nobody. No right. That's right. He was not that light, John the Baptist, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. And what a great witness he was. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. God's given us all a God consciousness. Every single one of us. There's that light within us that lighteth every man. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. My love, verse 12. But as many as received him. That's all you have to do. Just receive him. Yep. It doesn't say, but as many as remained sinless. Mm. Yeah. Right. right. Working your way to heaven. Right. It doesn't say that, does it? Mm. But as many as received him. Amen. Amen. To them gave he power. See, he changes you. That's right. All you do is yield. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. He comes right. in and he takes over and he changes right. you. He changes your wanter. Right. Your wanter changes. He gave them power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. That's that second birth, which is necessary for every man, woman, boy, girl in this, in this life. They must be born again. Christ said you must be born again. Now go me now to Genesis. Look at the the creation account, if you would, with me. Let's make an application this morning of God's creation and how the physical creation applies to us spiritually as individuals who are all in need of a Gospel of John's account of God's creation in our hearts. We need God to do a work of creation in us. Right. Amen. Spiritually. Yes, sir. Just like he did a miraculous work with the physical creation at the very beginning. It's also a miraculous work when a person gets saved. That's right. Amen. Okay? You're not just deciding to live better, do better. I know there's a lot of programs out there. There's 12-step programs and all this, and mm -hmm. people trying to, you know, live a better life. Quit this, quit that. And to a point, yes, you can, uh, you can clean up your life, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if you put your mind to it, you know. But, still, until God does a work of salvation in your right. heart, you're still the same down deep inside. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. That <coughs> fundamental change is what I'm talking about. Amen. Where He changes your wanter. Right. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. And gives you a desire to live for God. And from then on, you just, just love Him. Amen. Just, you yeah. can't help it. <laughs> I love you. You saved me. You know. It's, Amen. It's, it's wonderful. It's well, it's it's a miracle. It's, it's just it's as true. much a miracle as, as sure the physical is. creation, it is. It is. Right. the spiritual it is. creation it that God Amen. does. So in Genesis chapter one, verse two, the Bible says the earth was out form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Number one, those that are 
still only the creatures of God and not yet the children of God are without spiritual form. They're like it was in the beginning. The earth had no form. It was void. It was empty. Paul said in Ephesians, this is what we were before we were saved, having no hope and without God in the world. Okay. Miss Eva, could you close that door? Thank you. Having no hope and without God in the world. That's what makes us without spiritual form. Without God, without Christ inside, you are empty, you are void. God wants to fill you up. That's right. That's right. You ever seen one of those uh, jumping castles? But it's lying on the ground and it hasn't been inflated yet. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what we are without God inside. Yes. We serve no meaningful yes. existence, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not until God comes inside and, you know, and we're inflated. Yeah. You have God now inside you yeah. that you truly yeah. have yeah. meaningful right. existence. Right. Amen. Yeah. You can serve a true purpose for living. Mm -hmm. Most people have no real meaning for existence. So, Pastor Todd, how do you know this? Well, the Bible says so. Isaiah 53, 6. We have turned everyone to his own way. It's all about me and my family and my friends and my life. Selfish, 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 selfish. Right? When God moves in, he makes you like himself. He says, God so loved the world that he gave. That he gave. That he gave. Right? God's a giver. Yeah. Yeah. He's a giver. Giver of life and wonderful things. Mm -hmm. He makes His children the same way, to be givers. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's right. God gives you something, His wonderful love, to give out, to share with the world around you. That's why you're here! Amen. That's why Amen. He saved you. That's right. That's yeah. very good. He didn't just save you so you could be with Him in heaven, although He wants you to be with Him in heaven, but He wants you to live for Him. Mm -hmm. right? He wants you to serve Him and share His love. We've got a purpose now. Yeah. But it's all because we received Christ and God moved in. Do you remember when this happened? Do you remember when God gave you spiritual form? When you came alive spiritually? Can you go back to a date, a time, and a place where you met the Lord? Now, I was young at the time. I don't remember the exact date, Michael, but I remember it was an evening service, uh, after an evening service at church, and I remember going home that night, and I remember talking to my dad, and, and telling my dad, and I was convicted about my sin. I knew I was lost and on my way to hell, and I knew I needed to be saved. And I said, I woke my dad up. Well, we'd already gone to bed, and I'd been laying there for a while. And finally, I, I just, uh, I was just so disturbed about my soul, because I was afraid that night if I died, I'd afraid I'd drop off into hell. Yeah. And I, yeah, yeah. I was just so disturbed. Yeah. And finally, I had enough, and I jumped out of bed and ran there and got my dad. I woke him up, probably my mom too, and I said, "I gotta get saved." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so my dad came back to my bedroom, and we knelt down by my bedside, and I called the Lord. He gloriously saved my soul. I was only five and a half years old, but I remember like it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. Most precious memory I have. Yeah. And I called the Lord and He saved me. He moved in. And from that time on, I just love the Lord. Amen. <laughs> I've been loving Him ever since. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now sometimes it gets a little cold or you get a little away from God and things, but if you make that right, you know, He's yeah. like uh, Matthew was saying, He's, he's a good Father. Yes. You know? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yes, sir. And He restores us, you know, like a good Father. Right. He's been a faithful God all these years. And I've got no regrets. Amen. Whatsoever. Number two, not only are those who have not received Christ or they without spiritual form, but we see in verse number three, they're without spiritual light. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. In Corinthians, Paul says, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The change that takes place in a person's heart when God moves in is just as dramatic as it being in a dark room and the light's coming on. Mm -hmm. A pitch black room right. and the light's coming on. Yeah. Just as dramatic, right? 
in a physical sense as it is in the spiritual. Do you remember when light came on? Yeah. Those that are lost or groping around in darkness and don't even realize it. Yeah. You know, you can get used to the dark if you're in the dark long enough. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay? The lost are used to the dark. They're used to being in the dark. Mm -hmm. Especially if it's all you've ever known. Right. Yeah. Right? That's right. You've been lost all your life or whatever for a long time. That's all you've ever known. Right. You don't know anything different. Right. So it's very hard for you to understand, right? About spiritual things right. and yeah. how God brings light to your soul. Right? It's amazing. Do you remember when the light came on? Can you go back to a date, time, and a place when the light came on? Not only are they without spiritual light, they're also without spiritual placement. Look at verse number 6. God makes a division here, verse number 6, 7, and 8. It talks about the firmament there. Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which are under the firmament from the waters which are above the firmament. It was so. Division. We talked about last week, the message was about being different. How God makes a distinction between sheep and goats, right? between the wheat and the tares, between good ground and bad ground. Paul said in Ephesians that at that time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. God calls us aliens. The aliens are here. The lost that don't know God. That's a Bible word. Aliens. And strangers from the covenants of promise. I remember reading in uh, English literature years ago about the uh, man without a country. Ever read that? The lost are souls without a country. Mm -hmm. right. In Hebrews, it talks about that better country. Right? One day we're looking forward to going to that better country. We are already, the people of God, citizens of heaven. I have three citizenships. I have three passports. <laughs> The book of Jude says that the lost are like wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. The outlook for the lost is bleak, very bleak. But I'm so glad there's hope in Christ. There can be placement. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Into the family of God. Do you remember being placed into the family of God? Do you, do you remember getting your citizenship of heaven? Do you remember applying for your passport to heaven? Yeah, good. Do you remember when you got that? I got my passport. I'm going to heaven. God help us if we get over that. Right. Yeah. This is so exciting. Yeah. This is more exciting than anything in this, this life. But many are without that spiritual placement. Also, they are without spiritual sustenance. Look at verse number 11. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb... Uh, yielding seed, the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. In God's uh, Gospel of John, the Bible says this was Christ speaking. And sometimes Christ would say things that really stunned people. And this was one of them. He said, Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. Many of those who followed the Lord at that particular time said, Lord, this is a hard saying. Who can hear this? And many of them walked no more with him, the Bible says, after that. But Christ explained himself. He said, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Just like I'm speaking right now to you, uh, making a spiritual application of the creation of God. Right? Spiritually speaking, we feed on Christ. Mm -hmm. We yeah, feed on God. Right. We feed on His Word. Right. Amen. Christ is the Word. This is Jesus in print. Amen. Amen. And we feed spiritually off of His Word. Yeah. It's so important. Are you feeding on Christ? Christ is the Word, and the Word is Christ, and Christ is God. Do you remember when He became your sustenance? 
Mm -hmm. you, do you remember uh, a hunger after God? Do you remember a hunger after His Word? Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. That's important. That happens when you experience that spiritual creation. Mm -hmm. Just as miraculous as the first physical. Also, those that are still only God's creatures and not God's children or have not received Him as their Lord and Savior are without spiritual guidance. Notice verse 16. And God made two great lights, and the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and He made the stars also. David said in Psalm 23, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for Thou art with me. Thy rod and Thy staff, they comfort me. Yes, a child of God is still safely led in the dark times. There's still a light for us, even in the most difficult times of life. God gives us guidance. I thank God for His guidance, amen, during yes. those dark times amen. of life I've been through. And God's been there for me and my family. Yes. Where would I be today had it not been for God's guiding hand in my life? I don't know where I'd be. Do you ever remember receiving personal instruction or guidance from God? That should be there. If you've experienced that spiritual creation within you, that miracle, that fundamental change inside of you, you are now God's child and receive personal instruction from the Spirit of God that dwells within you. Also, they are without spiritual purpose. Look at chapter 2, verse 19. God gave Adam a job to do. What was it? To name the animals. Remember? Take care of the garden. Genesis 2, verse 19, And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field, every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam and to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. So he gave names to all the cattle and the fowl of the air and every beast of the field. That must have been fun, eh? <laughs> see that big animal with the big hips? Ah, hippopotamus. <laughs> Little thing flying around all the time. Uh, we'll just call you a fly. <laughs> in Ephesians, Paul said, In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. My childhood pastor used to say this Life's greatest knowledge is to know the will of God, life's greatest achievement is to do the will of God. Wow. Wow. That's, good. That's good. Do you remember when you found? True meaning and purpose to life. That's what God gives. True purpose. Right? So many people live in their lives. No real purpose. But God gives real meaning. True purpose for them. I'm so glad for that today. Mm -hmm. Me too. And then, not only that, but they have no spiritual fellowship with God. Look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Man and woman came together in that harmony and matrimony and fellowship. Apostle John speaks of that as well, 1 John. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son Jesus Christ. And these things write me unto you that your joy may be full. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had sweet fellowship with God? Do you know what it's like to have sweet fellowship with God? I've had some sweet times with God. Yeah. Some sweeter than others, you know? Like, it's all sweet and it's all good, but some are just a little sweeter than other times. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's some times that I've just been alone with God and just got to thanking Him and kind of crying and, and laughing and praising Him all at the same time. You know, it's just... Kind of like a, a day where it's raining but the sun's shining, you know, that one of those times. Mm, just, yeah. But inside. And just, just bubbling over with, with love and praise to Him. And mm. man, it's just sweet. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah. Sometimes you just kind of kind of lose it. <laughs> <laughs> you just kind of get so excited, you know, about the Lord and about salvation and what He's done for you. And uh, you just get beside yourself. I think Apostle Paul mentions that. <laughs> you ever have that happen? You recall that? Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. That's a good sign. It's a good sign you're saved. That you've had that spiritual new beginning creation inside. And it's good to let go, Miss Lisa. It's good. 
-hmm. It's good to let it out. You know, yeah. Amen. we need to do that more. We hold ourselves back way too much. Yeah, mm -hmm. Well, I don't want to offend anybody, you know. Uh, you're just missing out. Yeah. Okay. Let out the love, the joy, the peace that God's put inside. Why are you so worried about offending people, or whatever? And I know we got to use tact and we got to be wise, and you know, we don't want to cut people's heads off and. Um, you know, we just we want to be wise with the scriptures, and uh, we, we know the truth, and it's very powerful, so we have to be careful with it. I, I understand all that, but at the same time, we can hold ourselves back too much. We can go the other extreme. You know what I'm saying? And that's exactly what the devil wants you to do. Yeah. You're falling right into his hand. Yeah, that's it. Mm. Don't tell him about Jesus. Right. Don't no, think no, you're no. a freak. Yep. <laughs> you want them to think you're a freak or weird? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Listen to the devil. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I won't tell him this time. Mm -hmm. Well, next time. I don't want him to feel too uncomfortable. Maybe they need to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Right. You ever thought about that? Yeah. What is God leading you to say? What is God leading you to do? That's good. Again. If you're not careful, you give in to the pressures of this world currently the way it is. But it ain't going to stay this way forever. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Okay? And God is the majority. One day, Jesus is coming yeah. back. King Jesus is going to reign and rule. Right here. Right here. Right here in Benson Center. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to reign and rule. Yeah. Amen. Over the whole world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're getting closer all the time. Getting real close. You look at the, the prophecies, right? You see what's coming to pass, what's going on? We're getting close. I'm not sure exactly how close we are, but we're getting real close. For one thing, Israel coming back into its own land, becoming a nation again, this is huge. Okay? Over 70 years now, 71 years now they've been back in their, their land as a country. Folks are getting real close. Mm -hmm. okay. yes. So don't feel bad. Okay? Right. Don't let Satan work on you and yeah. mm -hmm. keep you back from sharing God's love, okay, and getting out there. You just keep having that good time with the Lord and fellowship and I think uh, Brother Gray was he mentioned the other night about you know loving the Lord and how important that is. Yes. Mm -hmm. The first fruit of the Spirit is love. Amen. That's good. Yeah. That's very good. Yeah. And then after that is the joy, right? Yeah. You get the loving right, and then the joy will come. Right. Right. That's right. That's right. And yeah. The peace. Yeah. Good. That fellowship with God is so important. Yes. Yes. Don't just rely on the preacher to fill up your tank on Sunday. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. right. That's right. Amen. So no, true. by the time you get to Monday evening, you'll be like. <laughs> <laughs> You won't even make it to Tuesday. Right, yeah. You know what I mean? Amen. Yeah. You've got to be a fellowship with God yourself. Amen. Amen. That's right. He'll fill your tank all throughout the week. That's right. That's good. Amen. He'll be giving you good stuff. Right. He'll give you octane booster and all kinds of things. <laughs> You'll be <clears throat> with Jesus. Amen. That's the way God wants to be. What I'm trying to do by the grace of God is just be an encouragement to you to Stay with God. Mm -hmm. Love the Lord. Yeah. You know, yeah. Walk with Him. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to encourage you. Mm -hmm. Don't rely on me. Okay. Mm -hmm. You got to walk with God yourself, and so do I. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. We all do. Exactly. We're all responsible for our own selves before God. That's good. Mm -hmm. God lets you choose Him, right? We have a free will before we're saved. We have a free will after we're saved. Right. Follow God. Mm -hmm. Right? We still got to exercise our free will after we're saved to be diligent and walk with God. Now, now we're saved, we're secure, we're His child, yes, but we still got to be exercising that free will. Just like we did before we're saved to accept Him and receive Him. So important. And then lastly, we see that those that are still only God's creatures and not His children yet are without spiritual rest. We see that in Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 2. How the Lord rested on the seventh day. 
And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. Christ said in Matthew, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Christ says, I will. Amen. There is a rest, God's sweet peace, when a person receives Christ and is saved. Uh, I don't think you can even put it into words. Yeah. The guilt of the past, uh, you know, just all of that, it's, it's, it's gone. <laughs> you know, all your sins, you know, are, are yeah. paid for them under the blood. And yeah. His blood's applied to you, and, and it's just, yeah, He cleanses from all sin. And it's all taken care of. Amen. Have you received His rest, His peace? It's an eternal peace. Amen. Yeah. Never get old, never fade away. It's everlasting. And God freely offers it to all men that will receive Him. The Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Will you receive Christ and allow God to cause a new spiritual beginning and a new spiritual creation in you? He wants to do a miracle in you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Going to one last verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We'll end with this one today. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. The Bible says, Therefore, if any man, you can put your name there, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. This is something that we all need to experience God's spiritual creation inside of us, this fundamental chain. When we receive Him, He comes in and He takes over and changes us and makes us, what it says here, a new creature in Christ. All those old things, the old life are passed away, but old, all things become new. God gives you a, a new way of thinking and changes your wanter and all that. You know? it's, it's a wonderful life. I pray today if if God's dealing with you and speaking to your heart that you'll come to Him and say, God, I want a supernatural work of creation on the inside. Yeah. I need that spiritual creation. I understand what you did through the original physical creation and it's amazing, it's wonderful. But I need that supernatural work of you in my heart. <laughs>